Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's pivot here just for a second to Tyson Fury. Before the fight against Usyk, he looked in great shape, didn't he? Looked like he had lost several pounds. Then in that ninth round, it looked like he had no punch resistance. He gets hit by Usyk. Obviously, Usyk's straight left has more power than it seems. But let's just say you had to wonder if Tyson Fury came in at his normal weight, would he have taken the punch better? Understand, you go through boxing history, it's replete with guys who lost weight before fights and then lost their punch resistance, right? It's an open question. I understand that boxing has a lot of folklore. I understand different people have different ideas on how to do things, right? Just understand from this seat, when I see a weight-drained fighter, I'm concerned about punch resistance, right? Just understand that Tyson Fury, in a rematch against Usyk, he might be better served, quite frankly, coming in with more meat on the bone. Now let's talk about a fighter, and he really does warrant your attention, because as I've said here before, I believe this guy with one of the best stationary jabs in boxing with a 6'5 frame has a chance to enter the heavyweight division and make some noise. That fighter is Lawrence Okole. Now, Okole, and it's interesting, he lost to Chris Billum Smith, a fighter he should have beaten. And he looked like he had no punch resistance. He was getting battered at cruiserweight. You saw the footage and you thought, gee, you know, this guy at heavyweight against bigger punchers would have problems. Right? Well, understand what's happened since then. Okole has gained weight. He's now fighting the Bridgerweight champion. We're going to talk about him in a moment. Believe it or not, I consider him to be one of the most intriguing fighters period, above Cruiser. Right, so Akoli gave an interview. It's on BoxingScene.com, I believe, right now. Where in the interview, Akoli actually admitted that he has gained so much weight that he had to lose weight to make Bridger weight. So Akoli, who has his weight back, feels that he's going to get back to knocking out guys. Now let's talk about Lucas Rosansky. Please remember the name. I made a premium video on this. I'm not going to talk about a winner. What I'm going to say is simply, this is a very important fight, not just for the Bridgerweight division, but for the heavyweight division. This is a very important fight, right? Lucas Rosansky has exactly the kind of fight style that I believe would surprise even an Alexander Usyk at heavy. Right? This is a guy who is front foot heavy and he's sudden. He throws very hard punches and he can shorten the shot. Understand, boxing really is a cyclical type of sport. Right, you have these big guys, they're the heavyweight champ, then suddenly an Ezra Charles comes along. Right, and Charles, of course, beats Joe Lewis. Suddenly you have a Rocky Marciano come along. Marciano had no clue what a back foot was. Front foot heavy guy. Right, awkward, completely schooled by Jersey Joe Walcott until he knocks out Jersey Joe Walcott. Then you figure out that he's a paradigm shift. Other guys are waiting. They're waiting to counter you. Here's a lead puncher. He's throwing heavy volume. Whatever his size, smaller guy, whatever his size, he packs a punch. Right? Every few years, you get a guy like this. Right? Joe Fraser. 
Mike Tyson, right? The smaller guy who's in the ring and he's not trying to run. In fact, he's not even trying to get a decision. He's trying to get a stoppage. Well, Rosansky is front foot heavy. He's going to surprise guys, in my opinion, with his sheer aggression with his ability to get a lot of shots off, with his ability to smother you. Right? You've heard me talk about how I've looked at Usyk fights and I can't figure out why no one tries to smother his right side, his non-dominant hand. Right? I can't figure out how the pattern keeps repeating itself. Look at the Tony Bellew fight. Where is Bellew stopped? Isn't Bellew up by the ropes? Doesn't Usyk hit him with the left? Doesn't Bellew then fall into the ropes? And, you know, where does he hit Fury? It almost looked like a replay of the ending of the Bellew fight, didn't it? That ninth round? Bellew, of course, goes down. That's the fight. Fury gets up. Well, doesn't get up. He takes the punch. Is badly staggered. Isn't the same. Takes several more punches. Then goes down. I imagine in the rematch. If Fury's that hurt, he should take a knee. Avoid the other punches. Well, what happens if you have a guy who isn't that big, but who is that aggressive? What happens if you have a bridger weight in Fury's face? What happens if he's prepared to trade shots with Fury? Does Fury have the kind of power to keep a guy like that who has his own extremely high KO percentage off of him? Think about other heavyweights, too. We've had other big clunky heavyweight eras. Look at Jess Willard. Look at how big he was when he beat a guy whose nickname was the Galveston Giant, Jack Johnson, my favorite fighter. Right? We, we've had. Big fighters in the past rule the roost. But then we always end up getting back to a Jack Dempsey, don't we? A Marciano. Right? We always end up getting back to that small guy who's a big problem. Right? So this Okoli fight, folks, it has it all. Right? Okoli's going to Poland. Understand, the Poles feel that they owe Usyk one because Usyk beat Glowacki. Right? In fact, believe it or not, Okoli beat Glowacki. Right? I need for people to look at countries like Poland. Their boxing scenes are being overlooked here. This is a big fight. A guy from the UK who lost badly to Chris Billum Smith is traveling to Poland. He's looking for a knockout, he tells us. He doesn't have experience at Bridger Way. He's fighting a Bridger Way champ a lot of people haven't heard about. A guy who has a different persona than Mike Tyson. This isn't the guy who comes in and he's looking tough and he's in persona and he's trying to scare people. Right? This isn't the guy talking about hitting you and pushing your bone through your brain. No, this is the guy who's at the pub having drinks. Right? They tell you there's a boxer in the pub. You don't even know who it is. Everyone's just another bloke. Then you find out that this guy is unbeaten. People haven't heard about it. Lucas Rosansky, we're going to find out in this fight against Lawrence Acoli if he's real. Let me just make a point here. You heard me say I believe Akoli can beat several heavyweights. Right? If I were advising Akoli, who's coming in with a new trainer, if I were advising him, I would say pass on this fight. This is a bad style matchup for you. Whether the crowd has heard of Lucas Rosansky or not, whether the boxing insiders think he has a chance or not, this is a dangerous fight. So the question is going to be, 
is a new tradition going to be born? You have a guy who is undisputed and heavy. He's about to be stripped of one of the belts. Who came up from Cruiser, the division right below Bridgerway. Right? Is Ukrainian Alexander Usyk going to roll the dice? Should Rosansky pull a stunning upset? It'd be stunning. Against the Bridgerway champ. Are we going to start to have a natural rivalry? between the heavyweight champion and the bridgerweight champion. Understand, in boxing, many of the great champions in history would be considered bridgerweights. I encourage people to look at the weights of Ali and Fraser before Ali Fraser won, or Fraser Ali won, depending on who you considered the real champion going into that fight. Right? Understand, you have a whole group of superstar fighter, Ezra Charles, superstar fighter, who would be bridger weights today, if not cruiser weights? Right? Are we going to find out that the bridger weight division is dangerous and that those guys might actually have a coordination advantage on bigger, clunkier heavyweights? So, Rosansky, the champ, versus Okoli, the challenger. Folks, it's about to happen. They both made weight, right? Okoli had to lose weight to make weight. For some reason, there's a group in boxing who believes it's better to be bigger and artificially make weight or make weight at the weigh-in and then gain weight after the weigh-in. I'm someone who has believed for a long time. I, I believe I wrote a book. 12 years ago or so, where I made the argument that you're better off not losing weight. You're better off being in shape all the time. We're going to find out if any of that matters in a few hours. Again, the fight's happening in Poland. It's for the Bridgerweight champion, the former cruiserweight champion. Lawrence Okoli is fighting a Bridgerweight champion who reminds me a lot of Mike Tyson, right? Understand too, Rosansky has a natural charisma. You know my core belief, life is unfair, right? There's some fighters who you see in the ring, the fighter could be brilliant, marvelous Marvin Hagler, brilliant fighter, right? I can't remember three fights where Marvin Hagler entered the ring and he was the crowd favorite. And I lived through the 1980s. Right? I can't remember three fights. Great fighter. Always came to fight. You step to him, he stepped back at you. Some great fights. I would say he was never loved. Now I look at the films of this Rosansky guy. And it's an interesting moment here for boxing. Right, This is the Polish guy who enters the ring and carries himself in such a way where the crowd loves him. But yet, few people outside of Poland know who he is. Well, he's about to get tested. My point to you, though, is styles make fights. I just watched a fight where a 6'9 guy was on his back foot and the 6'2 guy was on his front foot looking for <laughs> looking for the stoppage, right? That was for the undisputed heavyweight title, right? It's interesting because the 6'2", 6'3", guy was on his back foot out of necessity against Derek Chisora, right? You want another interesting fight where Usyk gets flushed onto his back foot. Look at him against Michael Hunter, who I'm telling people is underrated at heavyweight. Right? Just understand, Usyk has a harder time with guys his size than he does with big clunky guys. You see Usyk looking up at a Joshua, looking up at a Fury. Understand, Usyk's looking at these guys and he's thinking to himself, this big guy can't match my stamina. This big guy can't match my coordination. Right? I want people 
those of you who handicap fights, to look closely at Lucas Rosansky. Right? Maybe Okoli comes in, keeps him at the end of a jab. Uses length to beat this guy. But understand, this is the kind of guy who, if he continues winning, if he ever hits the big stage, the world is going to be astonished by how popular and charismatic this guy with the receding hairline is. Right? He uh, beat Alan Babbage, the savage. I encourage people to look at that fight. Understand, it starts badly. Starts badly for Rosansky. Right? He gets off the canvas. You can tell a lot about a guy in moments like that. He gets off the canvas against a guy with a punch who has just knocked him down. And he gets right back in the pocket. Akoli, in fact, I should give the champ top billing. Rosansky, Akoli, folks, this is a must watch. I'm just telling you the best fights in boxing sometimes sneak up on you. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.